Well, hi! We all know what happened to the Titanic. And if somehow you don't know, well, have we got some videos for you! Anyway, when I was a lot younger, you know, maybe in my 20s, <laughs> I was wondering every time I heard that story, why hadn't they just hit the brakes as you would do in a car? Well, of course, because ships don't have brakes. But why? Well, the first thing that comes to mind is that ships move in water. Duh! How do you even break in water? But then you need to remember that even airplanes have something similar to brakes, and they work to slow down a plane in the air. It seems like it's not that simple after all. Every kind of brakes out there works because of friction. When you hit the brakes in a car, it stops because brake pads tightly grip the wheel's rotors and cause a lot of friction, basically restricting them from moving at all. And if wheels stop, they cause friction with the road, and more friction means less speed until the car eventually stops. Now, as you can tell, something like this won't possibly work in water. Motorized ships are mostly driven either by the motion of propellers or by a jet stream of water shot from a nozzle. Simply stopping those won't produce nearly enough friction with water to effectively stop a ship. Ships still have brakes, though. They just need a lot more to properly work. To produce friction, the first thing a ship needs to do is to reverse her thrust. This is much more efficient with jet engines with controlled nozzles and less so with propellers. And if we're talking about a big modern ship, you can be almost certain she uses propellers. Reversing the rotation of propellers will start to slow the ship down. But the heavier the ship, the harder it is to stop. They are slow to muster speed, but inertia doesn't let them decelerate fast enough. Now, you can't do much with the water's viscosity, though. Sort of the thickness of it. It will stay the same no matter what. The ship's velocity, though, is another matter. Imagine a ship with a velocity so huge that it almost reaches infinity. Funny thing, she won't go anywhere fast because there is a paradox at play. A paradox is where two ships offload their passengers. <laughs> no, not really. The conflict here is that the bigger the velocity, the more power with which water will drag this ship back, because the friction and the water resistance will also almost reach infinity, meaning it's not really useful in stopping the ship. But one thing you still can control, the wetted area of the ship. Some ships have so-called stabilizer fins. Submerging those underwater will help the ship to slow down. These are actually the closest ships have to having brakes, because there is one kind of brakes that operates similarly – air brakes. Most jet airplanes have special kind of spoilers that allow them to slow the plane down significantly by increasing the drag of the air around. Stabilizer fins don't stand against the mass of water coming into them, but they expand the wetted surface and slow the ship down this way. If you would decide to put brakes like that on a ship, once again the water won't have it and will show its anger. Haha, <laughs> angry ship. Imagine a spoiler coming from the bottom of the ship. It will meet an incredible pressure from the water. So a mass of water pressing on the brake would be so huge, there is simply no way it won't break off eventually. Even if we're able to make an unbendable and unbreakable water brake spoiler, we'll meet another problem. Water pressing on the spoiler will simply force a ship down, maybe even submerging her nose underwater. More fantasy than anything, but anyways, you can be sure that maintenance of these things would be too expensive. And you'd need a whole team of scuba divers for that at all times during the trip. Imagine how inconvenient that might be. Another better decision is to start turning the ship. While propellers provide a reverse thrust, the ship's inertia is still moving it forward. All ships are made so they basically cut water in front of them, and their streamlined design lowers the friction. When the ship is turning, she reduces this advantage and the speed goes down. So, in general, ships don't even need emergency brakes. There is usually enough space to make a maneuver even without reversing thrust, and to stay on the spot, ships deploy anchors. I know what you're thinking, an anchor is the brake stop we're looking for! But this strategy is best left for action movies. Should an anchor get a grip on the seabed, it won't move an inch, and this will result in a huge dunk for the ship. This can quickly turn into a full-blown disaster. The only way to implement that strategy is to combine it with all the previous steps. Reverse engines, start a sharp turn, and when the speed goes down, the anchor is released on the side of the ship's turning. It will only work if the cable of the anchor or the chain is not stressed too much and is more suitable for small vessels in general. 
If everything is done right, the ship will spin around the point of the anchor drop, but won't go any further. Still, this way of stopping a ship is awfully extreme, and if a mistake were made, it can do more harm than good. Most of the time, lesser ships will use a cycling method to lose all the speed. Just laying rudder as far as you can sounds better than risking your ship sinking because of an anchor. Now, you may think things are much better for small yachts and motorboats, as they are much more maneuverable, but they also go faster. And the bigger the speed, the more distance you go before you can stop. The average time one would need to react and slow the boat down is more than 5 seconds. So let's imagine an average 30-foot-long boat that goes 50 miles per hour. 5 seconds will be enough for this boat to go another 12 times its own length. That's a recipe for disaster. If two boats head towards each other at a similar speed, the distance until the crash will cut in half and the collision will be almost inevitable. Fortunately, an occasion like that is improbable. No one leaves rudder without attention while going full speed, and most of the time, other vessels are clearly visible in the sea. But another thing does pose a great danger. Ships come in different sizes. That means it's much harder to tell how far from you is another vessel. It may be a really big yacht, far away, or a small boat and already too close. It's hard to tell in the sea, especially if bad weather comes into play. The lack of an effective way to stop is also the reason why ships have good signaling systems. Few air horns can be louder than the one on a ship. It's hard not to get startled by one, let alone ignore it. Another way a ship can let everyone around know that it's here is signaling with projector lights. These can cut right through the darkest night and the thickest fog. So overall, ships can't stop in place because water won't let them do that. But seamen have learned how to avoid trouble related to that. Being warned is much better than doing risky moves to prevent trouble. And no, the TV anchor people you see on the news did not get their starts working on ships, just so you know. Hey, if you learned something new today, then give the video a like and share it with a friend. And here are some other cool videos I think you'll enjoy. Just click to the left or right, either one. And remember, stay on the bright side of life.